to Hair to Hero with Hair to Berlin on Football Manager 2020 with me, Foggy Plays. Today, we are taking on Schalke in the opening game of the Bundesliga season. Um, interesting little fact, the manager of Schalke is Titi. Pretty sure that's how it's said. Titi, who used to play for, who was Villarreal, Brazil, Corinthians manager. What else has he done in the past? It was Corinthians manager before that. Gremio, Juventus, played for a whole bunch of teams. Definitely called Titi. If de- definitely, he uses it. He's doing his own director of football challenge. Fair play to you, lad. It's a, it's a grind. Speaking of, if you're not watching my other series, definitely go do that. It's oh, watching. Just oh, you won't want to use a direct football after watching it. It's my second year doing it. It's torture. It is so very painful. Uh, since you were here last, we did the transfer roundup. Um, and we're going to be taking off today in the game against Schalke. Um, as I said in the last episode, we do have a very oh, oh it's a tough start to the season. Schalke, Bayer Leverkusen, who just got a new manager, and Borussia Dortmund. Then we have a nice, hopefully, and we're travelling away for two of the first three games. That is, oh, uh, then Eintracht Frankfurt, which should be, in theory, a rather easy game. And then Armin Beinfeld, who are no longer an affiliate team because, you know, they got promoted. We, we got them promoted using our players, and now they're not an affiliate for us anymore. Uh, as I said, managing France as well. Cheeky, you know, job on the side. You know, whatever. No big deal. I uh, don't think we have any French players in our actual team, which is, you know, possibly an oversight in my part. Might need to get some French players in. Uh, but this is how we're lining up for the first game. Again, Schalke. We have Bingham in goal. Um, Marcus Antonio. Two of them definitely, definitely be duking it out for number one goalkeeper this season. Alec and Michael are going to play as our complete wingback because, oh, Oh, I do love a complete wing-back. Delict and Alpha Jr. starting as our centre-back. I'm giving Alpha Jr. as much game time as physically possible this season. He is five-star potential, only 19 years old. He is going to be a world-class defender. I just need to make him get there. Uh, then we have supposedly an Arne Meyer starting in central midfield. Fonseca, who's going to make, I think, his debut. I don't think he's played a game for us. He has not. Uh, he was injured for the cup game, so that's why he didn't start. And instead, Boramo did. And Boramo. Scored a goal. So, hard not to. And then Arne Meyer starting ahead of Fabian Arp. And Arp scored a hat trick. But it was against a team of not great players. Vinicius Jr. is going to play on the left. Catrone and Adair going to start up front. Originally, Esposito was starting up front, but I got to go with Catrone. Catrone scored more goals last season. He was a better all round player last season. Just has to be done. Uh, as you can see, Kyle George, sitting, sitting this one out. Um. Kyle George wants to leave. Not going to play. Although playing him might get, might get his value up. I don't know. Uh, on the bench then we have, um, we have very few centre-backs because Gavardal is suspended. Gentile is also injured. Which is, you know, less less than ideal. Um, Some young ho gets to sit on the bench today. And Kasha, who is probably going to be our starting DM when we decide to play with a DM. Because Kasha Oh, 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 does he look good. So, Fonseca is struggling for match sharpness. He can play the entire game, but I might bring Baramo on at some point anyway, just because I want to see what he can do in the league, because we signed him from Schalke. Was it? Did we sign him from Schalke two years ago? No. Did we? Baramo. Where did we... No, we signed him from Vedder Bremen. Uh, he is 16, but... Falls under the turns 17 before whatever date. So he can play. Um, Titi has a Tete playing for him. Standard. Had to be done. We do have a... I gave some faces to some of the new players. Like Adair is getting a nice new face for himself. Got a little face job. Face job. That sounds sexual. Got, a, got some face work done. Yeah, they got a new face. Um, I expect you to win this game. Uh, Horvath is sitting on the bench. Alec does continue as our number one right back for this season. They did share responsibilities an awful lot last year. So it wasn't a case that Alec played all the games and Horvath barely played. 
I do think it's going to be the same case this year where it's probably going to be 50-50 between the two of them because they're both quite good right backs and I don't want Horvitz um, development oh Catrone that ball bounced like four times in the box um, I don't want Horvitz growth as a player stunted by the fact that he doesn't get any football so we're going to try and make sure that we rotate I'll say with Josip and um, Alexander Michael I'm going to try and rotate them as much as I can um, in terms of centre backs as well I do kind of want to rotate more than I did last year it was definitely Garvidal and De Ligt were our number one centre backs last year with uh, Gentile and Alpha Junior missing out an awful lot so I'm kind of I have we have very good options all around the pitch I'm not going to sit here and say this 11 is the 11 that will start every single game but I do think we need to have I suppose a standard 11 we like to use like I'm giving Adair a chance today he's not the best striker we have at the club Um, I think star rating wise which don't trust the stars uh, Kyo George is our best striker at the minute Um, I'm not so sure I'd agree with that but I do think it is Kyo George and Esposito just don't play well together so that might be going against the two of them and they both want they're both unhappy so at the same time I'm like well, maybe just if I drop one I keep the other but who do you drop like Kyo George is probably the better of the strikers but wants to leave and we have Catrone and Adair came in for 52 million so kind of want to use him for obvious reasons because you know our strike force currently costs 150 or 200 202 million kind of want to use the two of them whereas Esposito I suppose Esposito was still expensive Kyle George was the cheapest of them so you know we didn't spend an awful lot of money on uh, on him and then we have all the youth prospects coming through that we've we've got so we've got a fantastic future if so we if we so choose Adair it's Post. Oh, how do you hit the post from there or there? Michael gets the ball in, doesn't find the player delict. Interesting. Wonder if this pays off for him. He got away with it. Delict got away with that because Tete. Lucky he put that one wide. Um, substitution o'clock. Fonseca is coming off for Bramo. Viniscus Jr. is going to come off for Espacito. And our final substitution will be made in the not too distant future. I think I already know who I'm bringing on. Just want to give the game a little bit of time to uh, open up, see how we get on with the changes we have made. Uh, the more Delict plays, the more I think maybe we should, shouldn't have spent 100 million on him. To be fair, he was fantastic last year. But can't say he's been amazing this year. Bramo. Oh, he just puts that wide. And Yanni Antoferis comes off the bench for Schalke. We're still only one up. Which uh, I kind of didn't notice. Bramo looks a handful so far. Gets it across. Catrone picks up the loose ball. Back to Bramo. Edair. Edair with the header. Get in. 2-0. Job is done. Simple as. We've won this game. There is no... No coming back from this. Um, you see Bramo is very, very left footed. Even though he hit that cross with his right foot. He is a left winger. I have decided when I signed him. I'm going to make him an inside forward on the right. Because I think he'd be good enough. And so far, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Uh, we're going to bring Kasha on. Like the passing of the guard. They're both Hungarian. Kasha and Sabozlai. Two Hungarians. Swapping positions. Kasha is a, is a DM who we've been training to be a Mazella for the last two years. Um, he is going to be our number one defensive midfielder. So when the time comes that we need to play a DM, it's going to be him. Arne Meyer, out to De Ligt. Um, Arne Meyer is definitely under um, a lot of pressure this season to keep his place because he has Fabian Arp and Eduardo Luiz. Who, to be fair, I didn't really give Eduardo Luiz a whole lot of opportunities. Um, I think he definitely deserved more 
chances in the first team than he's gotten. Especially last season. The season before when we joined him, or when he joined first, Arne Meyer had picked up an awful lot of bookings and a couple of injuries. So Edward Luis played a lot of the games towards the end of the season. And then last season he didn't get many chances at all. Oh, I forgot Escobar was playing for them. They had Santiago Escobar. One of our ex-players who we sent packing rather early. Played, he didn't play too much for us actually. He, wasn't really, he didn't really fit into our style of play. He played 19 games in his first season. We loaned him out. Came back. Played nine times. The season after. And then Schalke played nearly 20 million for him. I completely forgot they paid that much money for him. He's worth a lot more money now, but I still think we did uh, we had good business. And the fact they have Edward and he's sitting on the bench. He went to Man City. He's never really done all that much since he left Celtic. The poor man's career got destroyed by Man City. Hmm. I remember at the start I was looking at uh, bringing him in play up front with Piatek Piatek's not here anymore either Piatek's career fell off after he uh, left us so <laughs> that's why you don't leave here to Berlin because your career falls apart and you end up playing for Schalke uh, Maurice Alec had an absolute blinder of a game but Catrone got man of the match which is delightful Fonseca I'm not going to give out to Fonseca uh, Vinicius Junior on the other hand you were terrible um, I don't want to give out to Fonseca because it was his debut he was not fully fit we still came out with the win. That's all that matters, really. Most importantly, we're top of the league. We're not going to give up top of the league. This is where we stay from now on. Once I can make his professional debut. We could end up paying 19 million for him. First game he's ever played a football. Ever. Ignore all the friendlies. First competitive game. Uh, Catrone. We're never going to make our money back on Catrone. But the most important thing is he scored. And... We we made an offer for Sur Sur Surakawa. Oh yeah, Suraka. We um threw an offer him in for him because I was looking at the French youth system that we have in the national pool and oh, oh oh we have some good players coming through. France have some fantastic players coming through. So I threw an offer in for this guy, who I don't think has a release clause. He does not. But I am very interested. We'll do a quick little uh, yes, fuck away now. Thirty two million. For a 16 year old centre back. 5 million? No. Interesting. How about we give you 30% of profit and after 50 games we give you another 5 million. Ooh. Ooh. This is, this is, this is how I do. Um, I could also put in a clause where he gets, where he plays his first game for France. That we pay him an extra amount of money. Just never leave France. And just never give him an appearance. In the national team. And I never have to pay it. <laughs> uh, so for the next episode. When we come back. We are going to do the Champions League group stage draw. Which won't be too far away. And we'll play one of the games in that. And we need to go to rules. To see when the group stage is drawn this year. It is going to be drawn on the 27th of August. So in a week's time, no, not a week's time, two weeks' time. So in two weeks, we'll have our draw, which will be fantastic. Oh, yes. And we're going to try and win the Champions League again. It's been, been a while since we won it. We're definitely in the group stage, which is fantastic. We're the fifth best team in Europe, which means we're fifth best team in the world. Um, We could have, I'd love if uh, Partizan Belgrade made it into the group stage and we got them in the group stage and they qualified from our group. That would be, oh, that would, that would be. Everything you could possibly want in the world. Um, so that, that's, that's what we're going to do in the next episode. I can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. Play somebody in the Champions League. Um, oh, I really want to play Armin Beifeld. Because a lot of our players went there for a period of time. They don't have, they don't have a scary team. Oh, they have an, oh, they're captains from Azerbaijan. I may have to try and sign him. He's a right winger. From Azerbaijan. Anybody who knows my FM history, I love Azerbaijan. I've gone and managed in Azerbaijan in previous FMs, and I do enjoy an hour bit of Aziri. So interesting. So in the next episode, as I said, 
group stage draw and one of the the first away game i suppose or the first interesting away game will be the one that we're uh, we're going to play so we will be back for that and uh we could have some sort of we could have some sort of secret word that if you made it this far then you'd be like oh this happened um Put a dare in the comments. A dare. E D E R. Just put a dare. Or yeah, a dare. Or a dare. That would be we've no influence repair. What the fuck? What's happened here? Anyway, yeah, that's what we're gonna do in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching fellas. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave to lose to lose Make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe i you wouldn't imagine that i've almost 500 videos recorded on this channel alone thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one bye